All right, I hope this funky music got you excited to build a Telegram bot with me today. In this video, we're gonna build an extremely simple Telegram bot and it's not going to have any sophisticated logic, but it will teach you enough to create a bot on Telegram and to set up the infrastructure to receive messages and send messages back to Telegram. We only have 10 minutes, so let's dive into it right away. The documentation for the bots API is located under core.telegram.org slash bots slash API. As you can see by scrolling through the site, it has a wide range of available API methods, but today we're only going to use two of them. In order to create a new bot, we're actually going to use Telegram to do that. You can do that by using an account called Botfather, which you can find by simply searching for it on Telegram. Once you start a conversation with Botfather, it gives you a list of available options. In our case, we want to create a new bot. So we're going to click the slash new bot command and it's going to prompt us for the name of the bot and the username. Once that is done, we will receive the token to access the HTTP API. Now that we have a bot token, let's talk about how we're going to receive messages from Telegram. There are two ways how you can receive messages or so-called updates from Telegram. The first option is called polling. And with this approach, your server constantly send out API requests to the Telegram server asking for new messages and updates. And if there are any updates, it will return it as an HTTP response. This also means you need to query the Telegram server very frequently because if there are new messages, you want to respond to the users in almost real time. This also means, especially if your bot doesn't have a lot of traffic yet, you're going to send a lot of requests to the Telegram server, but not going to get any update in response. That's why I favor the second approach, which is called a webhook integration. The concept of webhooks is very simple. Every time a user sends a message to your bot, the Telegram server forwards this message through an HTTP POST request to a public endpoint or so-called webhook on your server. The concept is very simple, but in our case, it's a little bit tricky because we are developing our bot on a local machine and the server is running on local host. But the Telegram server needs a publicly accessible endpoint where they can send the request to. So we need to work around that. In our case, we're going to use a service called Ancroc, which is an application that enables us to expose our local development server to the internet. Pretty much what it does, it makes your local hosted web server appear to be hosted on a subdomain of Ancroc and forwards all HTTP requests to your local web server. You can download it on ancroc.com. It has a free version. I've been using it for many years and it's an extremely useful tool to build webhook integrations like this. All right, now that we have a plan, let's set up our project. Um, we can create a new directory and initialize it with npm init. And then we're gonna install some dependencies, which are express, body parser, axios, .env, and last, nodemon as a development dependency. After that, you should end up with a package.json that looks like this. We're only gonna add two more scripts, which is a start script that starts the server and a dev script that starts the development server. We can now go ahead and create a new .env file, which is going to store our environment variables. One of them is going to be the Telegram API token, which we received when we created the Telegram bot. And the second one is going to be the ncroc server URL. In order to retrieve that URL, we're going to start ncroc in a new development console. And once it's started, you will receive an URL, which is a subdomain of ncroc.io. And this is going to be your personal ncroc URL, which we're going to copy and paste into the .env file. Now we can create an index.js file where we're actually going to implement our bot. First thing is we're going to require all our dependencies and then we're going to define some constants, which are our environment variables called token and server URL. We're going to define the Telegram API endpoint an URI that will function as our webhook. And as you can see, I put the token into this URI because there is no real good way to ensure a request is coming from Telegram, except then making this URL very unique. And this is why we are going to use the token as the URI path. 
Last, we're gonna define the webhook URL, which is gonna be our Angrok server URL plus the URI, which gives us a URL that looks like angrok.io slash webhook slash the token. And this is the webhook URL we are gonna provide to Telegram. Now we can initialize the Express app. We're gonna tell the Express app to use the JSON body parser, and we're gonna create a listener on port 5000. As a first step, we need to provide our webhook URL to Telegram so Telegram knows where to send us their updates. And we can do that by using Telegram's set webhook API endpoint. We're going to create a new function called init. And in this function, we're just going to do a get request to the set webhook endpoint and have our webhook URL as the URL query parameter. And we're just going to lock the result to our console. In order to ensure that the webhook is always set when we start the server, we just call this init function when we spin up our server in the app.listen function. Now we will open a new developer console and run npm run dev, which will start our development server, which will also call the set webhook endpoint and lock the response to the console. And we can see that the webhook was successfully set. So now every time someone sends a message to our Telegram bot, we will receive this message on our local server. Now that the server is running and our webhook is set, we're actually going to create a new endpoint where we receive the updates from Telegram. So we're going to add a post endpoint with our previously defined URI to our code. And for now, we're just going to lock the request body, which contains the message updates from Telegram to the console. And we will respond with an empty 200 response to tell Telegram that we successfully received the update. Now we can do a quick test on Telegram. We can start a conversation with our bot by clicking the t.me link, click the start button and send a simple hello world message. Now if you look at our console, we can see we received an update which looks like this. It contains an update ID and the message itself. For this tutorial, we will keep it very simple. So the only thing we want to do now is to respond to the user with the same message the senders. So we're just echoing back whatever the senders. To send a message, we will use the send message API endpoint. And if we look at the documentation, we can see in order to send a message, we require two parameters, which is the chat ID and the text. Looking again at the update payload Telegram has senders, we can receive both the chat ID and the text from this payload. So in our code, we can just access both these properties and then we're going to do an axios.post request to Telegram's send message endpoint and include both the chat ID and text property in the body. Now we can just test it in our Telegram bot. So we're gonna open Telegram, we're gonna send our but a message, which can be an emoji or a text. And we can see that our bot successfully responds with the message we've sent them. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like. If you have any questions or want me to cover any specific topics in the future, just put it in the comments down below. Last but not least, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for this channel so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks again and see you soon. Bye!